Okay, it's fine. All right, um, here we have blood vessel man. You are responsible to recognize the blood vessels that are listed on your responsibility list. Um, we will begin up here by the heart with the first one on your list. So here's the heart. Um, first one on your list is the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava goes up and branches into right and left brachiocephalic vein. The uh, brachiocephalic veins branch into subclavian vein. Here's the subclavian vein and internal jugular. So here's the internal jugular. On the human, that's the largest one. Um, let's uh, follow the uh, internal, I mean, let me show you. Here's the internal jugular, and then over here is the external jugular. So we've got brachiocephalic, internal jugular, external jugular, subclavian. Subclavian moves over to the branch. At the branch, we have um, the cephalic vein here. The cephalic vein is the most lateral one. And a little more medial, we have the axillary vein. So here's the axillary vein right here. Now the axillary vein branches into the brachial vein right down the middle here. Here's the brachial. And the basilic. So we have cephalic, brachial, basilic. Then we have the median cubital, which is the communication or cutoff from the cephalic to the basilic. And I think that covers all of the veins of the uh, upper arm and the um, head. So now we'll go to the um, We'll go back. I think I better hit this one. Here we have the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins are represented here as red because those are the ones that now carry the oxygenated blood. Uh, next on the list is the azygous. We can see that from the posterior view. So let me turn this around for a second. Um, the azygous vein is draining the blood right along the dorsal wall and it is the last vein to enter right before the blood enters the um, right atrium. So here's the azygous vein right there. Now let's go right back around to the front and we'll do um, some abdominal veins. Um, some of these have good landmarks so it won't be too hard. Um, here's one that has great landmarks. Here, here are the kidneys and this blue vessel that is moving from the inferior vena cava. I neglected to tell you this is the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava uh, drains the blood from the renal vein, which is draining the kidney. So here's a renal vein, and over here is a renal vein. Um, then you move down the inferior vena cava until you come to the branch. So here we have the branching. This is the uh, common iliac artery, I mean, common iliac vein right here and right here. It's inferior vena cava until it branches into two common iliac veins. The common iliac vein then branches into um, an external iliac vein right over here, moves down into the leg, and an internal iliac vein. So this one runs um, a little more superficially. This one runs deep. If you follow the external iliac down, it will, in the leg, become the femoral vein right here. So this one right along here, this primary one, becomes the femoral vein. There is a superficial vein here called the greater saphenous vein. And that's important in bypass surgery for the heart. Okay, let's take a pause. Mm -hmm. All right, now we are going to be doing the arteries on our little uh, blood vessel man. We're going to begin with the aortic arch. The, the aortic arch, of course, is going to um, carry the blood from the heart. So we can see it here, but to get a really good view, I'm going to tip it like this and you get a real sense of how it is an arch. Here's the ascending, here's the arch, here's the descending down into the thoracic a aorta, right in through this region. Um, let's kind of turn it back though so we can get a good view of the other arteries. Um, so we have here, a, here's the aortic arch coming out of the top of the heart. Next on our list, 
our, our pulmonary arteries, the ones that are carrying the blood to the lungs. The pulmonary arteries are going to be represented as blue because they are low in oxygen. They are actually branches of the, uh, pul from the pulmon pulmonary trunk. So here's the pulmonary trunk. The, uh, we have a left pulmonary artery and a right pulmonary artery which then branches into all these little small arteries within the uh, lung itself. So remember, pulmonary arteries are blue, pulmonary veins are red. Um, now we'll go back to the arteries um, that come off the aorta. So first here we have the aortic arch, then we're going to have um, the first blood vessel that comes off is a, see if we can get where we can see this, I'm going to turn it around here. The first blood vessel that comes off is the brachiocephalic artery. The brachiocephalic artery divides into right common carotid, taking blood to the head, and right subclavian, which is going to take blood to the right arm. Um, but we'll follow, we won't follow that any further because it's not represented on this model. We'll move over here now to the left common carotid, the next blood vessel that comes off. You can see that. Here's the brachiocephalic. The next one that comes off as the blood flows through the arch is the left common carotid, and that is represented so you can see the blood going up into the head. Next is the um, subclavian, left subclavian artery, left subclavian. From about here to about here is the subclavian artery. When you get up into here, um, into this region, it's the axillary artery. And then, after the axillary, we get into the arm proper, and it's the brachial artery. So I'm going to turn this little guy around again. So, since he's left, let's get him over here on this side. So you have a sense that it's left. All right, we have, uh, again, here's the left subclavian ar artery coming off. We get out into this region, it's the axillary. Then we get into the arm, and it's the brachial artery. When we come down here to the antebrachium, we have two arteries. One is radial and one is ulnar. And how are you going to tell one from the other? Well, think anatomical position. The thumb is on the outside, so this has to be where the radius is. This is the radial artery. This is the ulnar artery. That takes care of the um, upper extremity and the uh, thoracic cavity arteries. Now we're going to take a look at the abdominal arteries. So let's take a break. Okay. Um, all right. Now let's take a look here from the side. Here's the arch. Here is the thoracic aorta. And when you get about down here to this, to the liver, actually, let me turn it around here so you can see. This blue is the diaphragm. So at that level, right about here, the aortic, the aorta passes through the diaphragm and becomes the abdominal aorta. So all of this is abdominal aorta, from about here to here. Um, so now we're looking for the blood vessels that come from the abdominal aorta. Now let me move this around here like this. Here is abdominal aorta, right here. And the very first blood vessel that comes off from here to here is the celiac artery. The celiac artery has three branches. I'm going to come around the other side so that I can point those out. Here's the celiac artery right here. One branch takes the blood to the liver. Takes the blood to the liver. So that would be the hepatic artery. One branch carries the blood to the spleen. So that would be the splenic artery. One branch, this little small one right here, comes around, loops around the stomach. So that would be the gastric artery right here. This is the gastric artery. So first branch off from the abdominal aorta after it's passed through the uh, diaphragm, therefore it is the abdominal aorta, is the celiac. The very next branch off, get over here, the very next branch off is the superior mesenteric artery. So here's the superior mesenteric, and it's um, heading over to the digestive system or where the mesentery is. The f next branch off after that is the renal artery. Can you see that red one heading to the kidney? One on either side. Red artery heading to the kidney. Then we travel on down, we hit the inferior mesenteric 
artery. So here's superior, here's inferior, and in between them is the renal artery. Then it continues down as abdominal aorta until it splits into two common iliac arteries. Two common iliac arteries. The iliac arteries then, the common iliac artery then splits into internal iliac and external iliac. The internal goes deep, external is a little more superficial. External iliac then continues into the leg as the femoral artery. And that should be the last one on your list for blood vessel man.